Welcome to the Close the Deal Show. I'm your host, Terrence McRae. Every week we bring you business information, tips, and insight from entrepreneurs, business professionals, and inspired individuals from the San Francisco BA area and beyond. The Close the Deal Show also features public announcements, entrepreneur weeks, and small business owners, as well as nonprofit organizations. And if you're looking for strategies to help you in business or educate the public, then you're in the right place. Thank you for joining us today. Today, I wanted to talk about a nonprofit organization. Due to uncircumstances out of my control, my guests will not be here today. So I decided I want to talk about public announcements, another particular topic dealing with business etiquette. Why is that? It's because in business, there's a certain standard that everyone must uphold. And I believe that if you pay close attention from your mentors, from the business profession, if you take any type of business class, whether it's management, administration, there are certain ethic rules that you must abide by. And why is etiquette so important in business? Etiquette is a set of unwritten rules and regulations to social situations as well as professional workplaces. For instance, you know, a lot of times in the workplace, most people find themselves being freely open after they get to know who their fellow colleagues are. And sometimes you have debate issues regarding religion. And a lot of times they say, don't take your personal matters to work. And your personal matters could be religion. However, you do want to be respected in the work environment. And so many years of people bringing their religion to the work environment has created um, new laws, new changes, better um, work environments where there's a lot more respect. There was a time period where people were offensive and would denounce other people's faith belief but that was unacceptable in the work environment. It changed the morale, it created commotion. Sometimes it also caused a great deal of violence. And etiquette is important in one learning. Also another issue is politics. You know, um, in the work environment, you know, a lot of people discuss politics. You know, once they feel comfortable with their colleague and if they have the same similar interests. So it's important not to allow yourself to always engage in certain topics. And one of the biggest issues in the last 20 years outside of racial discrimination has been sex gender. A big major topic, you know, has created so many different laws with sexuality in the work environment where today we have, you know, unisex bathrooms and despite regardless of the work environment, you know, it has created a way where you have to respect other people's beliefs. You have to respect other people's personal sexuality, regardless of you being offended. But the reason why I brought up business etiquette is because a lot of times when you set an appointment or when you are in negotiations and making a deal, there is a certain way that you must conduct yourself. You know, you see it in the movies a lot of times where a fella may look at a woman and the way he's looking at her is very inappropriate. Business etiquette wise, you're here to do business. You're not here to gawk. You're not here to be rude or disrespectful to anyone. So in the business world, good business etiquette means that you act professionally at all times, no matter what the circumstances are. You know, if you disagree with something, you know, you may have to put on a face that you usually don't have to show. But ideally, if you want to make that sale, you better show them pretty white teeth, no matter what the circumstances are. As I said, um, an exercise proper means that you act professionally and exercise these proper manners when engaging with others in your profession, especially any kind of profession that you do. When I mean engage, a lot of times when you find yourself doing a workshop, 
you know, and you may be having a bad day and the company is requiring all the employees to be there, you know. Um, if matters under your control occur, it's important for you to notify the right people at the right time as to why you're not showing up. So if you want to build, you know, strong relationships, you know, you want to be able to know how to apply business etiquette. And if you pay very close attention, you want to be able to succeed by having these tools because it's basically an unwritten rule to know these things. For instance, business etiquette is about building relationships with other people. You know, um, recently I met a woman who's from Korea and this professional woman has opened my eyes up to new things that I've never thought that I would be able to partake in. And it's amazing when you have the opportunity to learn new cultures. So take it upon yourself to not only socially interact with people, not just of your own race, but of all the cultures. That is very important, you know. So keep that in mind as well. Etiquette is not about rules and regulations, but it's about providing basic social comfort, you know. And I can't just speak for all African-American men, but I can just speak from my own experiences. You know, at times I may have felt uncomfortable around certain people because of a little intimidation, but that shouldn't change how I see that I'm being treated. And I've always been treated fairly, you know, in life. And now that I'm in the business world, I noticed that my background, for those who don't know, I was once incarcerated. And being in the business profession, some people may not take heed to that. Some people may feel offended by that. But a lot of my colleagues and a lot of people who have not only been on this show have not overlooked that. They have looked at me based on my character today, based on who I represent and why I represent and this is how they have become my friend. And they not only feel comfortable with me, but they invite me to places to where I've never had the opportunity to experience. A good friend of mine, Mr. Anthony Heckman, invited me to his birthday party. And he works for an ex extreme, extreme nice company that is doing so well, extremely well. Mr. Jasper Smith, the Bill Wealth Movement. Many times we have, you know, spent quality time and sat down and had a good conversation. So it's important when you're building business relationships for you to provide that social comfort, that comfort that makes the relationship lasting. So I want to get more into, you know, in securing your relationships you got to be honest, you know. If you can't meet a meeting or an interview, you got to be straightforward and let people know ahead of time. That's the appropriate thing to do, whether it's by email, whether it's by phone, or whether it's by text. Never forget your appointments and always check your calendar. This is etiquette, okay? So I want to share with my viewers, okay, how important relationships are built in business. Here are ways to build lasting business relationship in today's professional world. One of the things is be authentic. Don't beat around the bush. Don't um, portray yourself as something that you're not. Ideally, you want to let people see you for who you are. Your credibility is also by reference. However, you let people know who you are by your first impression. And ideally, you want people to take in who you are through your discipline, your commitment, and as well as the way you speak to them. Because ideally, you want people to feel comfort. And you never know, a lot of relationships have lasted for decades and more based on how you make people feel comfortable. 
You think Warren Buffett developed business relationships by saying something that made someone uncomfortable? No, he wouldn't be so successful. You think Bill Gates did that? No. Do you think Shaquille O'Neal, who is a very successful businessman, just as well as Magic Johnson, outside of sports, Shaquille O'Neal is the poster child of commercials for the NBA, even after retirement. But his charisma, his comfortability, his charismatic way of displaying, ideally, the values that he stand on, is something that he developed early on in his life through his father, which taught him discipline, which taught him a set of rules. Now, take note to that because this is all based on business etiquette. How he conducts himself outside the game today speaks volumes. Why? It's because still to this day people are talking about him, and he is a Hall of Famer. But he established himself in the NBA, but he's also established himself in the business world as a businessman with business etiquette. Two, identify and share your goals and values. Identify myself as someone who has transformed his hustle, if you know my past. And the reason being is, I identify with an organization called TheFiveVentures.org, an organization that teaches individuals character development, management, and leadership skills, a workshop curriculum that provides the kind of resources where I would have never had the opportunity to meet Sheryl Sandberg last year, or Jeff Weiner of LinkedIn, or Stephen Gundy, or Remco VL Dozen, okay? or so many other people through this organization who are corporate America, as well as a good friend of mine, Brian Breckwich, Joseph Finale, okay? A lot of people that other people already know that are credible in today corporate world. And that alone in itself has created an opportunity for me to stand where I am today. Also, develop mutual respect. And what I mean by that is be not only yourself, but understand that everyone's interests may not always be like yours, but respect theirs. And ideally, success will come. Why? It's because when you show respect towards other people, it comes right back, even if the person is being wrong. So, Unfortunately, I have to change the subject because my guest has arrived. <laughs> oh, it's truly, truly um, a blessing. Please step right on in. Um, and please pull your seat up. Okay. All right. Can you move the camera? Oh, oh my God. Can you move the camera over? Can you? Yeah, three. three, three, three. Thank you. Okay. Uh, put it on. Yeah, there you go. All right. How are you? I'm doing great, Terrence. How are you? I'm great. This is Mrs. Ma Maya Newsom. Correct. You in the camera, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, Maya, I am so honored to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. And I'm sorry that um, matters out of your control occurred. Yes. <laughs> Could you please elaborate and let the people know the nonprofit organization that you're the executive director of? Yes. I'm the executive director of the Onyx Scholars Program. We are an HBCU college readiness program, a 501c3 organization. Uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, we are, our mission, uh, we help kids in the inner city, uh, cities of the Bay Area and also in Fresno, California. We help them uh, go through, help them guide them, navigate them, per se, go through the HBCU uh, admission process. So we send kids to historical black colleges and universities. 
Now, how did the organization come about? The organization came about, um, it, to be honest with you, being a Richmond native, it was just really depressing for me to see uh, Facebook posts with RIP for, in front of kids' names who were only like maybe 15 years old. And then two, um, it, just, it, was, it just really saddened me to see that the kids that were dying weren't able to have, have make the choice, old enough to make the choice to see college. So after seeing all of that, all of that uh, conspire, uh, we decided, I decided to actually approach the, actually use a lean startup uh, uh, process to experiment and, and host my own HBCU pop-up tours. So what we will do, it's a, it's a HBCU pop-up tours were our, um, just a direct HBCU college experience that we will bring to the local high schools. And we saw that the kids and the parents were really interested in learning about the historical black colleges, but you know, the, the officials and, and, um, and, their, and their counselors didn't know any information. So as we talked to the parents, they were like, hey, we wanna, we wanna learn about HBCUs and how, how we could, um, how, and I, wanted, I wanna learn more, but we just don't know how to navigate that process. So at being that HBCU alumni myself, uh, attending Texas Southern University, um, I came back home and I had a different perspective and I saw that the Bay Area didn't have a live and vibrant cult, uh, college culture in, in, the, in the innermost uh, uh, low poverty areas in the Bay Area. So we, I wanted to create an organization, a nonprofit, to help kids, especially the kids who don't come from two-parent households or have low income, uh, low income families. I wanted to create an opportunity. And Onyx Scholars is, a, is an organization that creates resources, scholarship programs, and actually uh, makes college a reality. So ideally, how would you teach these students business etiquette? Of course, one thing that I would teach, how what we teach the scholars at our, in our organization is, is presenting yourself in a professional manner. We actually, on, our, on, on the kids, the kids that are at uh, Tuskegee University, a young lady, her name is Rosalind Junis. Shout out to Rosalind Junis. She's majoring in, in a, at being a veterinarian. Uh, she, we, we, we make sure and, and we go over with them that they, on the first week of school, actually once a month, uh, they dress up in, uh, in, business, in business suits. They actually are on a campus, and it's a requirement of becoming an Onyx College. You have to have that dress code, and you have to present yourself in that professional manner. But we actually push kids to to wear suits, and young men too as well. And that's one. And I I feel that 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 what that that just that whole personality and, and their self esteem goes up. And two, the when they when they see the kids on the campus, they're, that they're an Onyx Scholar. They're wearing a suit. They are presenting themselves, and I tell them to sit in front of the in front of the at least two front rows of the, of the of the college classrooms. So that's what that's how we distinguish ourselves, and that's how we try to build up that that business etiquette that um, that I feel that is missing in the public schools. How do you get contributions for your program? Uh, since we are a five hundred one c three, we we actually receive grants. We uh, we have fundraisers. Uh, last May we had a STEM day and we have uh, sponsors such as KPOR Center of Social Impact and also we had a uh, California Wellness Foundation who has also uh, gave us a, a great grant to uh, help to promote kids to get involved in the health sciences and tech industries. So we, we fundraise and we, we, we rely on grants and also we have personal don donors at this time. So, so if you wanted to make a difference in your community right now by campaigning your program, where could somebody find you? Well, they could find Onyx Scholars on www.onyxscholars.org. We have an official website. We are also on Instagram at Onyx Scholars. And then also, too, we, are, we have a Facebook page. And it's, it's, it's Onyx Scholars slash HBCU pop-up tour as well. And then, too, it's, it's not too hard to find the Onyx Scholars. We are a to we're revolutionizing the HBCU, uh, HBCU education and bringing that culture from the South that you see in the South to the West Coast. So uh, you could find us online, you could find us on our website, and then two, hopefully with our, with our next uh, fall a court of students, you'll be able to physically find us on, uh, with, through our students. So how many students are in the program right now? So right now with our fall court, her, court right now, we have over 30 kids right now that are awaiting, who are also juniors and seniors. And we, we, uh, we actually recruit juniors, focus on juniors and seniors, but we have uh, community uh, outreach programs that, that, that touch 
that, that touch all ages from five to middle school kids and also the freshmen and sophomores. So how could people sign up and become volunteers or participate in any type of fundraiser? And that's a phenomenal, that's a great question. Um, they can all, they could, they could actually check out our website, www.onyxscholars.org. And then two, uh, it, when you see the toolbar, you'll see uh, programmings. So just click that programmings tool. And then also too, there, there's also a contact form that they could fill out and uh, from volunteering and also partnerships and then also um, just just connecting with us. So you could find that, you could fill out that contact form. We'll get right directly to you and make that connection. Okay, so what is next for Onyx Scholars? That's a great question. Um, we actually just closed the deal yesterday with a major franchise. Uh, and we're actually going, we secured $12,000 in scholarships. So right now we're, we're working on uh, distributing uh, scholarships, uh, $2,000 scholarships to at least seven students right now in our core who are already at historical black colleges and universities at this moment. And then two with the major franchise, I'll release it. Uh, it is Jamba Juice, um, Jamba Juice here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we also uh, have collaborated and secured a, a, um, a deal where the students will not only, um, not only receive the scholarships, but um, we, they would also be able to work. And then two, that's one thing in the future for the Onyx Scholars. We don't see ourselves just being an HBCU nonprofit organization, but we see ourselves being a social enterprise, maybe perhaps a venture in the next five years. And with this uh, securing this deal and closing this deal as of yesterday, um, we, we, we work with a lot of first time generation college students. So it's important that not only will they receive an education, but they will have that foundation where they can also uh, be able to financially secure themselves. A lot of the kids we worked with have uh, worked two jobs, have lived from couch to couch until you know we could find and place them into an HBCU. So we, over this past year, we had maybe two students who were in that predic predicament. So we, we, we're, we're looking forward to actually creating pathways in tech uh, from our STEM day from last May, and then also uh, securing uh, business, uh, business accounting, business administration uh, opportunities with the, within this Jamba Juice uh, opportunity that we just closed yesterday. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Sounds very wonderful. So, if you could share with the viewers, you know, how could students in the San Francisco area get involved in this program outside of Richmond and Oakland or Hayward or Vallejo? Yes, sure. We, we've worked with, uh, we've actually reached out to a few faith-based organizations in Fresno. So we've, uh, we have, we're getting ready to expand, actually expand our programming from the San Francisco Bay Area to Fresno area and hopefully in the next few years to LA County as well. So, but the way that, the way folks who, who are outside the San Francisco Bay Area can contact us, again, mm -hmm. reach out to us at www.onyxscholars.org through our website. And then also, too, we're on uh, Instagram at Onyx Scholars. And uh, just connect with us on social media. That's, that's the best way to do it. And then, too, also um, our, our email address, which is uh, onyxscholar at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Definitely. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you again. Before we close this deal, we would love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions, questions, or even want to apply, be a guest. Visit www.thecloseofdealshow.com. San Francisco Bay Area viewers, you can find us every Monday night at 8.30 p.m. on Cable Comcast, Channel 29, or online, BABC. Live shows are every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, Cable Comcast, Channel 76, worldwide, the Close the Deal Show on YouTube. Just type my name and click my picture. Please subscribe, comment on your favorite episodes. Take good care, everyone. Don't forget, find the right connection and close the deal.